The biggest thing stopping investors from buying their first deal is usually capital. Trust me, I get it because four years ago when I started, I actually bought my first property cash at a tax deed sale because I thought that was all I could afford. And don't get me wrong, I still love investing in tax deed sales, but usually with the more capital, the more opportunities you can get to invest in real estate. And as a first time investor, you usually don't have as much experience, credibility, or even a track record to show banks and private lenders that you're trustworthy with their money. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over some loan programs that you can apply for to start real estate investing, how you can apply for these loans, and whether they're a good fit for your investment strategy. So the first loan on the list is the 203B program, which if you didn't know is an FHA product, which means that it's backed by the government. Now I'm sure you guys all associate FHA with 3.5% down because most people use this to buy their primary regular house and it has to pass inspections, which is true. However, with the 203B program, this is actually meant for rehab properties, although it still needs to pass an inspection. This loan program does only apply to single family residences or in an investor language, one to four units. And it also allows you to do either light cosmetic repairs or more extensive rehabs like knocking down a wall, structural issues, all of that jazz. The sweetest part about this program compared to all of the other ones is that you can put down 3.5% if your credit score is high enough, or if not, it's usually just a regular 5%, which for an investment property is still a killer deal. And the average APR as of today, which is October 16th, is roughly 6%. For this type of loan program, you can either go to your average bank, but I would highly recommend you going either with a loan officer or a mortgage broker so they can shop around at multiple banks that specialize in these types of mortgages. And of course, if you guys didn't know, I am a licensed loan officer here in the state of Florida. So if you are interested in this loan program and the property you're looking to purchase is in Florida, make sure to reach out because I can definitely help you out. How do you know if this loan program is going to work for you and your investment strategy? The biggest kicker with this one is that you do have to live on the property after it's completed and actually livable. But like I mentioned, you can buy a one to four unit property. So either you can buy a single family and house hack, or you can buy a four unit, live in one, rent out the other three, and you still get the benefits of buying a more rundown house, getting the money to rehab it and doing that whole process. Now with the rehab, you do have to have licensed contractor, which can get a little bit expensive and the renovation must be done within 12 months of the closing date. Next up, we have one of my personal favorites, which is the home equity line of credit, or known as a HELOC in shorter terms. A HELOC is typically used to use your home's equity as a form of cash to do improvements, or in our case, as real estate investors to buy more properties. For a HELOC loan, there is no minimum down payment because you're borrowing against a property already. So unless you're doing a purchase, we kind of measure this in loan to value ratios and the max that you can do with a HELOC loan. For most banks I've seen is about 85% loan to value. Now, because HELOCs are a little flexible in terms of when you actually get the money and the fact that you don't have to draw the full amount up front is that the interest rate is a tad bit higher. Just as a comparison, the average APR as of today is 8.73%. If you want to apply for one of these loans, again, talk to a mortgage broker, a loan officer, or go to your local bank since you already have all your accounts with them. How do you know whether a HELOC is right for you and your investment strategy? Number one, you have to have a house to get the line of credit from. So either you're in the process of purchasing and then they kind of put this loan with the other loan that you're getting, or you can have an already paid off property and have the HELOC serve as a first lien position where you're kind of getting like a regular mortgage on the property. Now with HELOCs, one of the big benefits is that you have little to no closing costs. It's very flexible loan because you don't have to take an initial draw when you close. You can usually borrow from the HELOC up to 10 years from the date of closing and you have up to 20 years of repayment so the loan terms are a little different than a regular like fha or conventional loan personally i really like helocs because if you're like me and you like buying auction properties you never know when a property is actually going to hit the market you don't want to have to pay interest for a few months until you're actually landing a deal so a heloc is great because you can have it all done and then as soon as you want to go fund a deal you can just go to the bank and draw the money now building a little bit on the heloc loan we're going to be talking about our third loan program, which is a cash out refi. Now you guys have probably heard of a refinance before, but in most cases, a lot of people do them to either lower their interest rate or to lower their monthly payments. However, in this case, we're cashing out an amount or essentially borrowing against the equity of the property. And I know you guys have heard about the cash out refinance before because a lot of real estate investors use it in the bird deal or essentially they buy 
rehab, rent, and refinance that property to take all of the money that they took from one of the other loan programs that we're going to talk about to pay it back and actually get a more accommodating interest rate, usually along the span of 30 years. So it kind of works like your normal mortgage. Now, again, with the cash out refi, you have to have a property in order to borrow from. So there's no down payment required. However, we do measure this in loan to value and the most that you can go typically with a cash out refi is about 80% or just like the HELOC. If you have a mortgage already, you can take out whatever portion is your equity equivalent to that 80%. Cash out refi serves as a more traditional mortgage method. So the interest rates are usually really good. The average APR as of today is roughly six to 8%. How can you apply as a loan officer that specializes in real estate investing? You can either reach out to me if you're looking to buy a home in Florida, or if you're not in Florida, you can reach out to a loan officer, your local bank, etc., etc., and kind of shop around the rates and see who has the better offer. How do you know if a cash out refi is right for you and your investment strategy? A, you will have closing costs with the cash out refi because it is kind of a more traditional mortgage type. However, you don't have to pay that out of pocket. It comes out of the loan balance that you're borrowing from. And the biggest difference between a cash out refi and a HELOC is the fact that upon closing, you usually get the loan amount that you applied for all at once. And then you start paying your mortgage payments two months after. If you're buying foreclosures, maybe you don't know when a deal is going to come up or go through, especially smaller investors, because I know we're always looking to get the best opportunity we can. Probably not the best unless you already have something lined up or under contract typically. And another difference between this and the HELOC is the fact that you can actually get lower interest rates with the cash out refi. Closing costs are a little higher, so kind of put that on the balance. Definitely let me know in the comments what you guys are thinking so far and whether you're a team HELOC or cash out refi and where you would use each of those. Next up, we have a loan program that's a little different and I did have to do a little bit of studying for this one and that is the SBA 7A loan. I know what you're thinking, Tiffany, isn't SBA a small business loan? Yes, it is, but they do finance real estate under certain conditions. So what is an SBA 7A loan? Essentially, it's a loan for small businesses where you can use that money to either make improvements in your business or buy real estate for your business. Now for the SBA 7A loan, typically you have to put down 10% of your own money for the loan, which is a lot higher than some of the other options that we offered, but this is for commercial properties. The interest rate on these are also a little bit higher with the average APR as of today being around 13.5% to 16.5%. To apply for the government SBA back loan, you have to go through their website and they have special lenders that work with them in order to get you qualified for this type of loan. So I'll link the link down below in the description so you can find one that's near you. So SBA loans are a little tricky and they're made for the right person. They cannot be used in businesses where the primary source of it is real estate investments. Basically, you cannot buy apartment complex, fix and flips, any of that stuff. Going into that, the seven a SBA loan is specifically for owner occupied properties. If you have a small business, it has to occupy at least 51% of the property. So let's say you buy a plaza with five storefronts. Essentially, you have to occupy at least three of those units and you can rent out the other two and have passive income that way. Of course, it doesn't have to be plazas. We also have self storage. We have facilities. We have distribution centers. There's so many options. And the typical loan term for something like this is 25 years. So five years less than an average typical mortgage. And a very similar loan to this is the SBA 504 loan, which basically gives you a higher loan amount and lower interest rate, but kind of the same rules apply. I would definitely do more research though, if you're interested in investing in commercial real estate. And the last loan type slash program slash not really is seller financing or hard money loans. I kind of jumbled these together because they share some aspects and they are most of real estate investors favorite types of loans. However, there's no set rules, guidelines or anything for them. A hard money lender specifically specifically is typically used for fix and flips where you have a higher interest rate and they'll fund literally any type of house because usually there's no inspections or if there are, they're very lenient. And then obviously once you're done flipping the house and now it's livable, you go back to the bank and you refi it with a regular mortgage that's 30 years and a lot less in interest. And with seller financing, a lot of people use this more in terms of the rental strategy because they either take over the seller's mortgage payments, or pay their closing costs, and then they have the house or whatever the interest rate 
it is that the seller had without actually having to go to a bank and give their credit information and all this other stuff. With the hard money lender, a typical down payment is roughly 10 to 30% depending on the lender. However, if we're talking about seller financing, everything is negotiable. So I've seen deals where people give no money down, which is crazy. And as for the APR on a hard money loan, it's typically 10 to 13%, which is a little better than the SBA loan, but you can use this money a lot more flexibly in terms of doing the fix and flips. How can you apply for a hard money loan? You can definitely find a bank or a loan officer that works with hard money lenders. We have a few here in Florida that I work with, or a hard money lender it can even be a friend, a family member. Possibilities are endless. And in terms of seller credit, well, the seller is basically who you're going to go negotiate with. So how do you know if a hard money loan or a seller financing deal is right for you? Like I mentioned earlier, hard money loans are used a lot for fix and flip purchases, and you can use them either for single family residences, or you can even use them for commercial deals. So the possibilities are endless and it's a lot more flexible. You don't have to have great credit because a lot of these loans are short lived or people only have them for a few months to a year. You want to make sure that the lender hadn't put in a PPP clause where basically if you pay the loan amount upfront in full, you get charged a penalty for doing that because obviously they're not going to make any money off of you if you're paying off the loan balance. And to balance this out, they usually give you a higher interest rate if you don't have a prepayment penalty. So you really have to put it on the balance and make sure you have a good plan to execute. And another thing to take note is that depending on the lender, you do have to show renovation plans, blueprints, architecture drawings, and you might also need a track record or basically a portfolio of houses, flips, work that you've done before in the space, because most of these hard money lenders that are banks aren't going to just give some random person doing this for the first time some money. I hope you guys found this video helpful and even got motivated to take the first step into investing in real estate and of course if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below because we're here to help and i also want to know which one of these loan programs that piqued your interest the most maybe you didn't know so much about it and as always i will see you guys next time Mwah.